Hi guys, welcome back. Uh, Mr. Adams here, and this is your second introductory video to your GCSE Medicine Through Time course. Now in this video, we're going to have a look at how we start to go about breaking down this big chunk of history that we have got, uh, and how we go about explaining how things have changed or stayed the same. Now, as we said in video one, what you are looking at here is a development study. So we are looking to see how medicine has developed, how medical knowledge and people's health have developed across this period of time from 1250 through to the modern day. As we said previously, this is obviously about 800 years of history. So we need a way of being able to both break it down and then to explain it. So if you look at the yellow boxes that we've got down here, this takes you through essentially a really boiled down version of what it is that we do with this course. Okay, so step one, which we looked at in video one, is about what changed. So, for example, what did people think caused disease and what changed in that belief across time? Box two is what we're going to have a bit of an introduction on today. Well, why did these things change? And in some cases, uh, stay the same. Okay, so why did people believe different things about the cause of disease across different time periods? Box three is something we're going to have a look at uh, in the next video. So this idea of the extent of change. Once we've established that something has changed, uh, once we've come up then with our reasons as to why that has happened, well, how quickly did these views change? How f and how far did they change? How much of a change was this? Okay, but for today, it's that middle box, that why box that we're going to be having a look at. So to introduce us to this, I'm going to give you um, a fairly sort of introductory example here. So we're going to look at this idea of why did people believe different things about the cause of disease? Um, and in this case, what we've got, we've got a picture in the bottom left there of a pretty grumpy looking peasant um, from 1250 in England. And his belief is that disease is sent by God as a punishment for our sins. So that is the belief that this guy had at that time. Disease is as a result of God punishing people for their sins. And then what we've got here is a picture of a doctor from modern day England, whose belief is be largely in line with our own, that disease is caused by bacteria and germs infecting the body. So we can clearly see that these two people have different views on what it is that is causing illness. Now, the answer here is never, ever, ever, ever that one person was stupid and one person wasn't. We need to be able to explain it in uh, a more nuanced way than that. So what we're looking to try and do is to understand, well, why did our peasant think that disease was caused uh, by God punishing people for sins? Why does our doctor today think that disease is caused by germs and bacteria? And therefore, why have these views changed across this period of time? Now, in order to do that in our medicine course, we use a range of factors. Now, how I would go about thinking about these factors, these are kind of like catalysts. These are things that um, bring about change okay? or bring about the idea of continuity. Right? So these things have an impact on how fast or, or to what extent ideas can develop. So what we're going to do, there are about nine of them. Uh, I'm just going to go through each one of them with you to start with. Okay, And I'll give you a little bit of an example for each one. Now, what I would encourage you to do with these videos as well is um, go back, watch it again. Think of your own examples that you could use with this. Uh, pause different bits um, and, and just have a look over it so that you are happy with these because we're going to use these factors all the way through the course. 
So the first one is religion or the role of the church. And we've just seen in terms of our medieval peasant, that is obviously quite an important one for them. The idea that their religious beliefs dictated their, their understanding about medicine. So how has religion helped to change or keep the same people's medical knowledge? Second one we'll look at is government. So what we mean by this are the people that are in charge of the country. So that could be kings or queens in a medieval period or our politicians today. And they obviously have a large role to play in the improvement of public health and improvement of medicine and medical knowledge. Okay? So that is another factor that we can use in different time periods to explain change and continuity in med medicine. Attitudes, and what we mean by attitudes is the general view that people hold at the time. So in some time periods, we will look at uh, people and they are quite traditional. So they hold traditional views. They don't really like change. They're quite happy and set in their ways almost. And then in some time periods, we have people who are more inquiring, who want to uh, understand the world, want to, to find more things out. One of the biggest and probably easiest uh, factors to use um, and make connections with is this idea of science and technology. Okay, so um, how has our developing technology improved medicine? Again, if you think of our peasant example there, there wasn't a huge amount of technology that would have that would have helped them to understand um, germs or bacteria or something. Whereas today. Uh, we have the benefit of developed scientific knowledge and technology. Okay, so that's another factor we can use to help explain things. Uh, communications, what we mean here is kind of like access to information, sharing of ideas and things. Again, if you look at your medieval period, you, if you lived in 1250, you probably were born in a village, stayed in that village all your life and ultimately died in that village uh, without ever really interacting with other people. You know, Obviously, the, the most obvious example here is that we have things like the internet today, so we can share ideas, we can communicate more effectively. The development of education. Um, again, the level to which people in a country are educated or have access to education could have an impact on um, their understanding of medicine. Um, War is always an interesting one. So how far and to what extent has war had an impact on our understanding of medicine? Um, be careful with war. We, we, we're not referring to um, the idea of, well, war is bad because lots of people die in war. Yes, that is obviously the case. But we're looking at, well, how far then has war enabled us to, to come up with new medical ideas in order to, to try and prevent death and things like that? Uh, teamwork, so we have, well, we're going to see groups of doctors working together and things like that. Groups of scientists working together in research teams to help try and improve things. Uh, chance, chance is one of my favourite ones. There are a couple of brilliant of exam examples uh, of chance or luck playing a role here. And this is, this is always something that does play uh, a role in history. So some medical uh, breakthroughs have been made purely by luck. And we're going to see some of those examples. Uh, and then finally, individuals. We're going to see 20 to 30 different individuals across this course who have made medical breakthroughs. And we need to be able to, to talk about them and the way they approach their, uh, their, their, their work with medicine to understand that. OK, so these are all the factors that we're going to use. These are things that we're going to use to help explain change and continuity in medicine and uh, in more importantly in medical knowledge and medical development across this period of time. In a later video what we're going to do is we will have a look at how you go about putting this together. So how you go about incorporating the work of government or individuals into an answer um, about change and continuity. So don't worry about that for now. At this stage, just start to get your heads around the idea that these are the things we're going to be working with.
So to finish with, um, I'd like you to have a bit of a think, sort of at this stage, of um, examples of how three of the factors you've just seen could have helped to improve uh, or progress medical ideas over time. Okay, so what I would do is I would um, go back to the previous slide and have a look at the, uh, the 10 factors that we have there and try and have a think. I've given you an example here that I'll go through in a second, but try and have a think of um, how have these factors at different points in history, how could they have played a role? So, for example, here I've taken the factor of science and technology. So how I would approach doing this is I would say, OK, so one of the reasons why medical knowledge has improved over time is because of science and technology. I might then give a specific example, such as the development of the microscope. And then I would be able to explain, well, how has that development of the microscope helped us to improve our knowledge? So I'll talk about things like um, our means that we are able to examine uh, things in more detail and therefore we've been able to see germs and bacteria and microbes and all, and all of that kind of stuff. So maybe pick um, three of the factors from the previous slide and have a think about okay well how could that have improved medical knowledge across time. Okay um, I will see you again soon and we'll be putting together a, um, another few videos on this as well. I hope this has been useful. And as I said, key thing, just, just re-watch it, go back over anything if you need to. Um, yeah. Bye.